Urban heat island is a term that is applied to cities and very large metro areas that tries to explain or denote the influence of a lot of buildings and pavement, cars, traffic, that elevate the temperature compared to surrounding areas. So it's those buildings and, and lots of pavement in that that actually retain more heat than outlying areas that are primarily composed of vegetation. In the context of climate change and impacts, because cities have an elevated temperature already, they're more likely to feel the effects sooner and more pronounced as climate becomes warmer. We set out to better understand the urban heat island of Madison, Wisconsin, uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, the first is it's a medium-sized city. It's um, a little bit different than the typical city that's been studied for urban heat island effects. And the reason that's important is because a, a, a larger majority of people generally live in mid-sized cities versus the really big cities like New York and, and Chicago and, let's say, Atlanta, Georgia. So we were particularly interested in understanding how the urban heat island changed uh, over the course of the year and how that was a function of you know, the time of day, the day of year, and specifically where you might live um, within the greater metro area here in the Madison region. We found that the urban heat island does change in terms of its magnitude and how it manifests itself throughout the region. Generally, those effects are most pronounced during the summer and at nighttime, and to a lesser extent during the wintertime. One of our studies looked at um, the summer of 2012, an example of a really hot year. And the significance of 2012 was that it was very typical of what we might expect the mean climate to be like in let's say 50 to 75 years in the city of Madison. There were 39 days at the airport that were recorded to be above 90 Fahrenheit. What the heat island study suggested from our temperature data is that the core of the heat island in the downtown Isthmus area actually had 10 extra days above 90 degrees. So instead of the 39 that were recorded at the airport, there were actually closer to 50 that a larger amount of the population was experiencing. And we can show that there's a discrepancy between temperatures that are generally recorded by an official observing station versus what temperatures actually were um, in the core of the downtown area. Urban heat island studies have a lot of potential to tell us about how specific land use and land management practices might be impacting how temperatures play out in a city. And so in a, in a place like Madison, Wisconsin, or any other place where there's a variety of different land cover and land use types, whether it be an urban building or um, a park or a grassland or a cornfield, we can get a better sense of what types of properties of the land surface uh, translate into certain amounts of temperature differences. And if we start to understand those relationships better, we can use that in better land use decision making or let's say planning of cities. How much effect might we get from a park? Is it better to have a central park that's many thousands of acres or should we have those spread among an urban area in small patches? And if we know by making certain decisions on how we develop cities or put buildings up, we'll better know how, let's say, energy demand might change if you make this decision in urban planning or um, how people that suffer from health impacts of warmer temperatures, how their lives might be impacted going forward. So I think it's a matter of using all that data uh, to the best of our abilities and partnering with other researchers, you know, not only at the University of Wisconsin, but at other places to say, okay, here's some information on precisely how temperature patterns change during the year and the time of day, how might you use that information to create a better environment for people to live in moving forward?